What's up guys? Scott Lennox here. Welcome back to the channel. Fishing OC, Hooked on OC, Deadly Tackle. So much going on down here. Thanks for joining us here on our YouTube channel, man. Um, so we decided, Kristen and I decided to go do a little flounder fishing today. We got a beautiful Saturday morning here. Tide looks pretty good, but we're not always worried about catching fish, right? We do want to show you how we do it though, so you can have some success when you come out here and go flounder fishing throughout the summer. There's a couple of different ways we do it. Um, we're going to start off drifting into thoroughfare, shallower water, using some of our deadly tackle stuff. Um, and then we're going to go over to the East Channel, use a little bit different bait, only a one hook rig. Tide slows down there and we're going to fish deeper water looking for those bigger fish. So um, stick around, we're going to show you some flounder fishing 101, how we do it in the back bay here in Ocean City, Maryland, using a couple of different techniques. And uh, with these fish now transitioning from shallower water to deeper water, you can catch them in both areas. Whether we catch anything or not, no big deal. We're going to show you how you can do it throughout the season. So, let's get it. And remember guys, if you haven't done it already, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. It'll update right in your email and stuff when we have a new video coming out. So, uh, let's go flounder fishing. All right, so we're about to get started here in a thoroughfare, and the thoroughfare is a large area toward the north part of the main channel. Uh, Ocean Pines is over to our west. You can see Ocean City in the background. Over to my right, over on the east, you've got um, Captain's Hill over here to the south. Once you get up past Captain's Hill, you'll see these really nice houses over on the west-hand side. There's a little spot where there used to be two islands, Dog and Bitch Island used to be right down here. They are since long gone, but there is still a shallow area there because of, of, of the sandbar that exists there. There's another sandbar behind me. There's a sandbar behind you in between us and Ocean Pines, and all this is marked pretty good. You're gonna to wanna to stay left or right of the red markers when you're either heading out to the ocean or coming back from the ocean. Remember, red, right, return, coming back from the ocean. Watch out for the Ding Dong Brigade coming from the south. But we are in a spot that we call the center channel here in the third fair. It's a nice spot, it comes up to about three feet of water up to the north end of it. it, goes all the way down here to the south end of it where it's about 20 feet deep right before it empties into the main channel uh, that comes around into the third fair. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drift through here. A couple of years ago, we were in this exact spot and I called the first flounder of the season. Uh, that was just last year. And then uh, earlier this year, uh, I'm pretty sure he was here as well. Um, the first flounder of the season was caught right here in this center channel again. So you can see fishing here sometimes late March, early April, and then throughout the entire summer. But right about now is when it starts to transition to the fish are moving into a little bit deeper water. So this is why we like this area going from shallow to deep. What are we using? Using deadly doubles, man. We love deadly doubles in the bay. Come in four different colors. We've got orange, white, pink, and chartreuse. That's a favorite. We've also got the Squidly. Squidly comes in three colors. Squidly comes in chartreuse, white, and pink. They all glow, which is pretty nice. That's a good rig for the ocean as well. Caught a flounder on the first day of sea bass season on that, on that green Squidly rig. Another one for the bay. The guys on the um, Miss Ocean City love this chartreuse double trouble. Chartreuse double trouble is really good for back here. Also comes in orange, white, and pink. And I'm gonna go with the orange. I'm gonna go with the orange deadly double. This was really good to me in Watcher Creek, Virginia a couple of months ago. Kristen, give me a nod if I'm right. Remember my five pounder? Yeah, I remember your five pounder. <laughs> that was caught on, we had a shark, you know, yeah. orange on then, right? Yeah. yeah, she, Kristen caught a five pounder on the orange with a nice big orange gulp. Today you're going with this, right? Yes. Going back to chartreuse, chartreuse. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. So let's go ahead and get mine tied on here. I'll show you how we do that. Real simple. Don't complicate things, okay? When you take this rig out of the packaging, grab all of the leader material, drop it down like that, and then you're gonna find a swivel. Find the swivel, and then hold that swivel up and just let it all fall, okay? Once you let it all fall, it's gonna untangle really easily. You can see that was super easy, but there's the deadly double, and you can see this thing is really effective because it's very extensive rig. I don't even know if I'm fitting that all in the shot. Swivel's up top, main lead comes off the first first uh, couple of inches, goes at about 18 inches or so to the spinner blade, the beads, and the hook. Drop down to your sinker hold, and you can, oops, get, so it's catching my backpack. Come down here to your sinker hold, and that's where you're gonna either use the clip for the sinker, or you can bypass the sinker and just use the loop. Come down here to the bottom, and that's where you're gonna find a little bit longer leader. That leader comes off of the main line, 
about 24 or so inches, all right? That's why we think this, this rig does really well because it's really pretty extensive, covers a lot of territory. And I don't take credit for this because it ain't mine to take. Dale Timmons, a very, very good friend of ours, invented the Deadly Double back in the day. It was a very successful rig for him. I started getting a bunch of questions on, uh, on Hooked on OC, like, what are you using to catch those flounder? What are you using to catch those flounder? So we brought the Deadly, de ta uh, Deadly Double and some other rigs to market. Now they're doing really well for a lot of folks out there. So here's how we tie it on. Very, very simple. Take your ball bearing swivel up at the top. I like to double my line over, okay? So I'm gonna double over my main line coming from the rod, it's just as simple as that. And then you're just gonna act like it's a regular old single line. Take that double loop, push it through here. All right, see it's just acting just like a little single line. And now you're gonna do just a regular old fisherman's knot or a cinch knot, clinch knot, some people call it. Leave a loop down there at the bottom, go around the main line once, twice, three times a lady, about five or six times. Take that end, tag in, go through the loop you made, and then cinch it down just a little snug. Still like the wet braid a little bit. Give it a little wet, and then boom, cinch it all down tight. Now I've got all that compressed and nice. You can see my, what is this? There we go. All right, see that's all snug and tight. And now I'm gonna put my sinker on here. A little windy today, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use a three ounce sinker because we're drifting pretty quick and I wanna be able to stay down on the bottom, which is as simple as this. Take the eye of your bank sinker, go on the sinker clip, bing, bang, boom. This rig's ready to go. We'll bait it up and we'll drop it down. All right, so we're gonna start drifting here in a second. Uh, it's, it's pretty windy today, but we're, we're gonna make the best of it. Water's okay, water's pretty clean. Uh, and like I said at the top, man, we, we don't care if we catch anything today. We're, this, is more about, this is more about showing you guys how we do it. And then you guys can put this stuff to work. If it works for you, let us know. Um, but we catch a couple flounders, so this is, what, this is how the Lennox is doing here in Ocean City, Maryland. So here's how we bait them up. Um, real, real easy. So in the early spring, when live bait is not as plentiful as it is during the summer, a lot of people are going to use just gulp, right? Gulp is a really easy product to use. Here's how it works. There is a right and a wrong way to put a gulp on. You're gonna catch fish if you hook it like this. There's no two ways about it. Let me get some more line here. There we go. You're gonna you're gonna probably catch fish if you hook it like that, like you would a minnow or something like that. You might catch fish if you hook it through the side, just let it hang on there like that. You might catch them like that, but you'll probably catch more fish. The line's not gonna get as tangled if you hook it like this. Find the spot on the body where the hook is gonna come out the back and then you're gonna you're gonna put it on here just like you would a shad if you were using a, a, a lead head on a rockfish lure. Pop that hook through the back and then he'll ride just like that right on the shank of the hook. And if you have minnows, you can tip a minnow on here or something like that, but I've got something even better today. So that, that is ready to go. A lot of times first fish of the year is caught simply on that, just the gulp down there swimming. They do a great job mimicking a fish and it's a great bait for back here in the bays in Ocean City and uh, in short places all along the East Coast for flounder. Now, so what do I have today? I got some real, real good. I caught some mullet. Mullet are just starting to show up in the bay. They're very, very small. I had to pick them out of the cast net. Pain in the butt, but what am I gonna try drifting through here? There she is. I got an otter tail. I'm gonna put an otter tail pink straight on here and I'm gonna tip it with one of those mullets. And we'll see what happens. Otter tail's a tough bait, man. Really, really effective. Got a hole already poked in it, so that's as simple as it is to get it off. Now, they can be tough to pull off if you do it like that, right? Which is a really good thing. So what do I do? I go against the back of the hook where the, the barb is and pull it reverse style that way. A little slimy too. And that way you don't feel like you have to cut it off of there to get the to get the outer tail off. All right, but I'm not taking it off. So there we go. Back on. And then here's these little mullet. You're tough to catch, got them all. That is a beautiful, beautiful little bait. Look at that joker. That thing is gorgeous. Just about the size of a live minnow. Like them a little bit bigger than this when we're fishing the East Channel, places like that for those bigger flounder. But 
going to show you this for the hooking purposes, just like a minnow. You're going to take a mullet, minnow, whatever it is, and go right through the tip of his nose. You're going to try and get him as far back as you can without going through his brain, because you're killing him, and as far forward as you can so you don't come off real easy. Look at that. Bingo, bango, boom. That is ready to go. I've got my Calcutta TE. I got my Calcutta TE 200. Don't even make this reel anymore. In gold on my JPR Custom Curly Q. Orange Deadly Double. Gulp. Otter Tail Mullet. Let's go. Guys, don't forget on our website, fishingoc.com. We got party boats, charter boats that both do this back here in the back bay. So if you don't have your own boat, don't be discouraged, man. Fishingoc.com, inshore tab. You'll find party boats like Back Bay Adventures, the Calico Jack, the Bay B, um, the Tortuga, Happy Hooker, a bunch of them back here. Also, some inshore charter boats that will take just you and your family, six or less anglers, and have a great time. Couple drifts here in the thoroughfare. No luck, man, but we weren't really expecting much. Looks like I did get a bite. My, uh, my mullet's gone, so that was a good sign. But we ain't got all day. We're just here to show you guys how we do it. So what's next? Heading down to the East Channel. Gonna tie on a different rig, same setup. Calcutta, JPR rod. Um, if you're wondering what class this is, this is like a, I got a 20 pound braid on here. And this is maybe your 10 to 20 pound conventional outfit. Uh, same rod, same reel. Gonna switch out the rig. Use a different bait, fish in a little bit deeper water. Let's go, OC, let's go! <laughs> Woo! And turn toward me. So, okay, guys, there's another great option. Don't forget, if you want to come down here and you don't have a boat, you can also rent your own boat. Bring it out and have some fun. Bahia Marina on 22nd Street, right on the bay, uh, rents pontoon boats and small skiffs. Also got Island Water Sports if you're staying toward the north end of town. It's kind of on the Fenwick line, right there on the ditch, right? Right on Route 54. Island Water Sports also rents boats. They rent some a little bit faster too. So check them both out if you want to rent a boat, bring it out here on your own. All right, moving on to the East Channel. East Channel, go ahead and spin around that way, babe. East Channel is this entire channel that runs from south of the Route 50 bridge all the way along the east side of the bay, up through here, up to Harbor Island, and then you go, boom, northwest and get to places like the Thoroughfare, Route 90 bridge, and spots like that. But what are we gonna do? We're gonna drift in this deeper water. We're looking for bigger fish, so we're gonna use bigger bait. You can use a deadly double in areas like this, but this current gets ripping through here pretty good sometimes, so you're gonna wanna pay attention to that and not use it when it's moving real fast. So off with the deadly double, simple as that. And then on with the live bait rig. Live bait rig is a very simple rig as well. All it consists of is one, one swivel. That's an inline three-way swivel. A clip for your sinker at the bottom and a live bait hook about two, two and a half feet off of that three-way swivel. Here's how you do it. Just like before, fisherman's knot on the swivel through the eye of the swivel around five or six times through the hole that you made center down tight it's ready to go put my tag in the reason we use these rigs like this is because you don't need a lot of flash when you're looking for those bigger fish you're using natural baits like mullet and bunker and spot you want to limit about you know three to five inches long looking for bigger fish in this channel i'm going to use that same size sinker three ounces if you have to use more than four ounces or so in each channel don't fish here it's moving too fast and there you go that's as simple as it is so you can see what happens is the three-way swivel sinker drops down to the bottom and then this sits just above the structure just above the bottom with that live bait back there just fluttering in the current and those big fish really really like that if you're out here at the right times so i'll reach down here and grab one of these mullets Love mullet when we're drifting this channel. Love mullet. You hook them exactly the same as you would if, as you would with um, you're using a deadly double. Sometimes you can use spot as well. And we'll show you this with the mullet. We're gonna drop that down there just like it is, man. Not a lot of flash. 
except for what the fish provides. And sometimes that's enough. So this is how you fish the East Channel, man. You're gonna wanna just drift along deeper water, wait for a bite. Sometimes guys will use their trolling motors over here. Sometimes guys will use um, a current sock where it slows down your drift or has you drift in a certain way. I like to use our big engine and I'll just kind of bump us in and out of gear so we stay a little bit slower because if you're drifting through here too fast, those larger fish sometimes are not as aggressive, right? They're not gonna come out and blast the bait if it's going by 100 miles an hour, but it's sitting there in front of them, agitating them like it can. They might come out and take a big bite. So we'll give us a couple of drifts, but this is, uh, this is um, fishing technique number two as we do it here in Ocean City. This one we're looking for a little bit bigger fish, fishing East Channel. Pretty quick, buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> that was a one minute drift right there. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry about that. I just stuck it behind you. <laughs> there, just make sure you get your foot in the net. He said, oh, he's got one. It's over the season. Thanks a lot. All right, let me get some place where I can <laughs> tell you what just happened. Okay, that, that didn't take long. Uh, there we are trying to show you how we do it a certain way. The thoroughfare just didn't look right. Thoroughfare was a little bit brown. Um, tide's outgoing, so it's gonna get nothing but more brown as the tide goes out. The last bit of clean water is left here in the East Channel, so I had a feeling that if we were gonna have any luck at all, not really caring if we caught a fish, um, that it would be in the East Channel. Water's a little bit cleaner, deeper, you're able to fish a little slower, but listen, it's Saturday. Look at all these boats. A lot of boats going by. Some of them, uh, some of them don't know exactly what they're doing, but it's very, very good spot. So we don't really like fishing here on the weekend too much, but in the during the summer, weekdays can be very, very productive. Bam! There you go. So our size limits down here in Maryland, most most of which are along the East Coast. Um, there's different size limits in New Jersey, places like that. Make sure you look at your local rules for flounder fishing. Seasons, bag limits, size limits, all that good stuff. In Maryland, we are a 16 inch minimum size, four fish per person, and we're open year round. So we don't have to worry about having any, you know, closed seas or anything like that. 16 inches, I'm pretty sure this fish is gonna make it. He looks like he's about 17 and a half, 18 inches, nice and fat. You know, thick, that's gonna be a couple more fillets. Um, let's check them out. So, all right, so when you're measuring a flounder, you're gonna wanna put them on your measuring device. I made it easy and I put a black line on 16 inches. So anytime, I know when it gets past that black line, I'm good to go. So those of the fish goes onto the measuring device. It's nice to have these ones where it'll bottom out, closed mouth on a flounder, and then stretch them out until you get to the point of the tail here. That fish is 18 and a quarter. Yeah! So for coming out here just to try and do a video to show you guys how we do it, I mean, I think we proved the point. There you go, East Channel, Live bait, that little mullet worked out perfectly. Live bait rig, um, that's our Deadly Tackle live bait rig. You can get those on our Deadly Dash Tackle website. Um, but there you go, man. Beautiful flounder, and we got one going home with us, too. <laughs> it's a fish. It's a ray. That's a It's a ray. with it too much with all these boats and traffic it'll give the people a little bit of the show but i'm not messing with oh, here here's i had a feeling i was gonna break off that was a huge cow nose ray um i'll put a picture of one up here captain mark spagnola shoots these things all day long that's because they're so uh plentiful back here in the bay but cow nose ray don't want to mess with him cow nose ray will ruin your day when it comes to flounder fishing <laughs>
right, guys, as you can see, man, summer is getting started here in Ocean City. Um, folks are having a great time when the weather cooperates like this. It's going to be crowded out here on the weekends. Kids are out of school, so um, families are out here enjoying themselves on the sandbar and on the bay. So it's a great time to be in Ocean City. And as you can see, man, that flounder fishing can be effective. That's the two ways we usually do it. Springtime, early summer, we're in the thoroughfare. We're drifting either um, deadly doubles, double troubles, or squidly rigs. And we're using gulp, otter tails, live minnows if we can get them. Those little, those little mullets come in real handy too. And then over here in the East Channel, once the summer gets kicking, water gets a little bit warmer, those fish are going to be in deeper water. And as you can see, man, we weren't even talking about going and catching a fish. We just want to show you folks how we do it. And sure enough, man, lucked into one on the very first drift, less than a minute into it. So um, if you put your time in and the water's clean, those two methods can be really, really effective. So get out there, enjoy yourself. Good luck if you go flounder fishing. Be safe on the water this summer. Uh, everybody seems to be being responsible out here right now. It's a great day in Ocean City. And like I've told you before, man, like our social media right here, I'll put it up right here. Fishing OC on Facebook, I Fishing OC on Instagram. Make sure you hit the website, fishingoc.com, for our nightly fishing report and deadly dash tackle.